video part 1, you have learned that written tests are one of the direct methods of assessment and teachers commonly use written tests as class test, mid semester test and end semester test. The basic requirement for any written test is a good quality question paper. But the question papers which are set are under criticism and it has been found that there is inadequate coverage of the content. There are external choices given to the learners and thereby the learner do not learn the whole content but learn 50 to 60 percent of the content. Inadequate coverage is also there that all topics of the syllabus are not covered in the question paper. Another criticism is that 80 to 85 percent of the questions they test the lower level abilities namely remembering and understanding and only 15 to 20 percent of the weightage goes to application and higher than application level abilities. There are number of questions where trivial things are assessed like definitions, stating the units of measurement, enlisting the two different types of engine and so on. Sometimes the questions which are framed are incorrect. For example, many of the question papers consist of write a short note. Now, when you say write a short note, you leave it to the learner what is to be included. The intention of the paper setter is not clear to the learner. There are cases where there is repetition of questions. Repetition of questions occur over the years and sometimes in the same question paper, the question is repeated maybe as a short answer question, as a part of restricted essay question or it may be included in the extended essay type question. Sometimes there are grammatical mistakes in the questions and when the paper setter is not from the system, then there are chances that irrelevant questions may be included in the question paper that is questions which are out of the syllabus. None of the paper setters try to determine how much time would be required to attempt the question paper. It is a very rare phenomena that a paper setter tries to attempt or tries to estimate the time that would be required to answer the questions. And there is also inappropriate mark allocation. Maybe when it comes to assessing ability at the remembering level, more marks are given and when it comes to mark allocating marks to the question assessing understanding level ability lesser number of marks are given or marks are indicated against the question but not distributed among the parts of that question. A good quality question paper need to be characterized by important characteristics. First is validity. Now, when you say validity, validity refers to whether the test measures what it intends to measure. For example, if you are designing a question paper for building construction, then all the questions will be related to the content for building construction. If you are trying to design a question paper 
for introduction to computers, then you may not include a question from database management systems. Validity also refers to whether the question paper measures the different levels of learning outcomes in cognitive domain. That means, does it give weightage to the learning outcomes at remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating and creating level. So, if there is proper allocation of weightage to the different ability levels, then the validity of the question paper is high. Third important consideration is that the paper which is set should include questions where the intentions of the paper setters are clearly stated and understood by the people who take that test. The second characteristic of good assessment tool is reliability. Reliability refers to the consistency of scores or dependability on the scores. If the same test is administered on the learners again after 10 to 15 days or maybe a month's time, then there should not be significant variation in the scores of an individual. The ranking of the students should more or less be the same. Another important consideration is that the test should have intra-rater reliability and inter-rater reliability. Intra-rater reliability refers to that if the same answer script is checked by the same examiner after 15 days or 20 days or after one month, then again there should be high correlation between the two sets of scores attained by the learners. Inter-rater reliability on the other hand refers to that when the answer sheets are checked by two examiners, there again is high correlation between the two sets of scores attained by the learners. So, one has to look into that a question paper which is designed should yield consistency of scores. The third characteristic is objective. Now, when you say the question paper is objective, that means the scoring is objective. If you do the scoring or another person does the scoring or a machine does the scoring, then there should be high correlation among the three sets of scores. There should not be variation and if you think that multiple choice questions are used in the question paper, there is 100 percent objectivity in scoring as for a right answer 1 is given and for the wrong answer 0 is given. Another consideration to increase the objectivity of the question paper is that there should not be any kind of bias or there should not be an element of subjectivity as far as the question paper is concerned. It should not favor any kind of learner or it should not be unfavorable to any kind of learner. The fourth characteristic is practicality. A good assessment tool should be implementable or feasible. That means, if you have designed a question paper for 3 hours, then the learners should be able to attempt that question paper in the time provided. Or if you are planning to have a viva voce within 3 hours, and you would like to allocate adequate time to your student 
then you should be able to implement it within the time specified. So, the good quality question paper should be valid, reliable, objective and invisible. There are numerous steps involved in setting a question paper. Normally, the teachers when they set a question paper, they do not devote adequate time and they pick up the previous years papers or the class test papers which they have set, keep a book before them and then try to set the question papers. But a good quality question paper requires adequate time because you need to ensure validity, reliability, objectivity in the question paper. Now, let us see what are the various steps involved in setting a good quality question paper. The very first step in setting a good quality question paper is to know the topics which are to be covered in the question paper and the learning outcomes that need to be assessed. For example, if you are setting a question paper for the course on building construction and estimation and you have 11 topics, if it is going to be the class test, maybe you have covered the first three topics, thus the question paper would include these three topics. If it is going to be the end semester test, all the 11 topics need to be included in the question paper. Then the learning outcomes of these topics, if it is a class test for the first three topics and if it is all the topics to be covered in the end semester test, then the course outcomes need to be known to the paper setter. The second step is to determine the weightages to be assigned to various topics. Normally, if a person is setting a question paper, equal weightage is given to the various questions which are from the various topics. In other words, equal weightage is given to the various topics. But how do we determine how many marks need to be allocated to each topic. Now, here you can see if you are going to set a class test and three topics you are going to cover, then the first thing is to find out the instructional time you have spent on each one of these three topics. So, for example, 7 hours 4 hours and 4 hours have been given to each one of the 3 topics. Then if you are going to set a question paper of 30 marks, then you can see that the proportion would be that you give instructional time assigned to the topic divided by the total hours you have spent on instruction multiplied by the number of marks for the question paper. So, 7 divided by uh, 15 multiplied by 30. So, you get that 14 marks need to be allocated to the first topic and likewise for the foundation and the brick masonry. 8 marks will be allocated in the question paper. The final weightages are decided on the basis of which particular topic has more application or will enable the learners to apply the learnt knowledge in the real life. On the basis of that consideration, 1 to 2 percent variation can be brought in the marks allocated to various topics. And now, with change 
from the traditional system to outcome based education, the curriculum document many a times contain the hours to be allocated to the various topics and it also include the table of specification which will be the next step. If it is going to be the end term test and all the 11 topics are to be covered, then the paper setter must have the cognizance of the course outcomes which have been specified. In addition to that, the learning outcomes of various topics, they need to be known to the paper setter so that mapping can be done. The next step is to know the learning outcomes of the topics which are to be covered. So, one needs to be sure of which particular learning outcome is to be assessed in the question paper. The next step is to prepare a table of specification. Table of specification is a two way representation where the paper sitter is likely to determine how many marks of the total marks will be allocated to assessing learning outcomes at different levels. And here you can see at remembering level, at understanding level, at applying level and higher than applying level. So, on the basis of the learning outcomes, the mark allocation is done to the various levels of learning outcomes which are to be assessed. In other words, the paper setter ensures that different ability levels are assessed through the question paper. After the weightages have been determined, the next step is to select the types of questions or items to be set in the question paper. And we are well aware that you can use selection type items which include alternate response type items. That means, the true false kind of items. There can be matching type items where the student is required to match the principle with the scientist or a principle with its application. Multiple choice type items which have a premise and followed by the 4 to 5 options and the person has to select the right answer from the alternatives given. There could also be assertion reasoning type items. The person needs to determine the weightage to be given to the selection type items and the supply type question. Many of the universities do not include selection type items. But if there is provision, then 20 percent weightage or 25 percent weightage can be given to selection type items and 75 percent weightage can go to supply type questions. And then once you have taken a decision how much weightage is to be given to various types of questions or items, then the paper setter keeping in mind the weightage to be assigned to various levels of learning outcomes to be assessed, questions are to be written or items are to be written. And here you can see that learning outcomes, they can be directly taken as the questions. Now, here you can see define the following term. Now, this may be one of the learning outcomes as such that at the end of instruction a learner will be able to define. Now, here you can see all questions which have or which start with define they are at the remembering level or state the law or list 
the operations commonly performed by the microprocessor. So, you can see learning outcomes become the basis for writing questions at the remembering level or understanding level per se. So, or applic applying or higher than applying level. Now, here you can see some of the questions which have been directly translated from the learning outcomes specified for various topics in different courses just to give you an idea how the questions can be framed. Now, here you can see that there are questions at the applying level. Now, applying means when the learned knowledge is applied in a real life situation or the world of work and all these situations which are enlisted are different from the situations which have been dealt in the classroom by the learner. So, these questions are at the applying level. Then questions at the analyzing level. So, where you are identifying reasons, causes or you are trying to identify the strengths or weaknesses. So, questions at evaluating level would require a learner to make a selection after determining the worth of a particular material or a method or a technique or a theory or requires the learner to determine the relevance, effectiveness or judge the adequacy or appropriateness of a given thing. Then questions at the creating level would involve learner in creating or designing something new. So, these are few examples of questions which have been directly taken from the learning outcomes. Now, these questions you see are supply type, but you can convert questions at the remembering, understanding, applying or even analyzing level to the other forms of items. Maybe multiple choice questions are suitable for any level of learning outcome except creating level then true false are suitable for remembering and understanding level. Likewise, when we say short answer type questions, they are suitable for assessing learning outcomes at the remembering and understanding level and essay type questions would be required at the creating level. So, in nutshell, the these steps are followed for writing the questions or items to be included in the question paper. The next step in setting a question paper is, if as a paper setter you are satisfied with the questions or items you have written, then there is that you will review those items edit those item and ensure that they are technically correct, they convey the intention of the paper setters, they are grammatically correct and they are also as per the guidelines for writing the various types of questions or items. And this process will continue till as a paper setter you are satisfied with the items or the questions which you have written. You can also give the, these items or questions to one of your colleagues to review those items and as per the feedback you can edit those items. And finally, you assemble the test. Now, what do I mean by assembling the test? A good quality question paper consists of four parts. It has general information, there are instructions, there are questions and items and there is mark distribution. Now, when I say general information, 
on top of the question paper there should be name of the college if it is an internal examination or it is an autonomous institution or there has to be the name of the university followed by the branch for which the question paper is prepared the year or the semester indicate also the course and the course code general information should also include the total marks to be allocated and the time allowed whether it is 2 hours 3 hours or 1 and a half hours instructions which are normally given after the general information need to be complete they need to be brief they should not take more time of the learner and they should be correct and simple easy to understand and if there are sections which are included in the question paper and there are separate instructions for each section then it is better to include instructions section wise and this also need to be grammatically correct the third thing is the questions and items so the questions or items they are to be relevant they should measure a significant outcome and they should be correctly framed as per the guidelines for writing questions or items and they should be properly sequenced and grammatically correct i'm just giving you the basic guidelines but you need to go to the guidelines for writing true false matching type multiple choice type items assertion and reasoning type items as well as writing fill in the blanks short answer type essay type which may be restricted or extended essay type to write a good quality question or item and the fourth part of the question paper is the mark distribution so the marks you have allocated to the various questions which you or items which you have included in the question paper so the mark allocation should be proper to each question or item and it should be distributed among the three parts or subsections if there are any in the question so if your question consists of abc part and there are 10 marks to be allocated to the question it should clearly specify how many marks are to be allocated to part a part b and part c the next thing which one should take into consideration is that higher ability level questions should be assigned more marks and difficult questions they need to be assigned more marks in comparison to the easier questions and marking scheme is to be provided especially when you are including numerical questions or extended essay type questions then the paper setter must provide the marking scheme to the examiner because it should not vary from one examiner to the another so if a uh, say numerical then one should clearly specify how many steps are there in solving a numerical and how many marks are to be allocated to each step so if we try to follow these principles we can ensure that mark distribution is proper or appropriate as far as the question paper is concerned so friends these are the steps which are involved in setting a good quality question paper which is valid and reliable thank you